This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so this message I received from the Holy Spirit. The moment you start to prove to man who you are, you have given a foothold or space to Satan. The moment you start to prove to man who you are, you have given a foothold or space to Satan. That's what the Holy Spirit told me. The Holy Spirit. And then if Jesus did not do it, we should not either. Because after that, he took me to Jesus in the wilderness. And remember in uh, Matthew, I believe it's Matthew chapter 4. Let me make sure because I know I should be confident in what I'm saying. I don't want you to suffer for me telling you the wrong verse. Let me see. Matthew chapter 4. Yeah, okay. So in Matthew chapter 4, remember that um, it says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted and became very hungry. During that time, the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Remember, he said, if you are the son of God, like if you are who you say you are, then do this. Show me your power. But he said, no, and he 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 get, he fought that temptation with the word of God. Then in verse five, it says, then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem to the highest point of the temple and said, if you are the son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands. So you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. So he gave him some of the scripture, tried to tempt him by giving him some of the scripture. Jesus responded, the scripture also say, you must not test the Lord your God, okay? So each time when he was tempted to prove his identity, he did not give in unto that temptation. He did not give in to that temptation. Rather, he used the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, to refute that temptation, okay? To, to fight off that temptation. That's what he did. And... And the actual scripture, anyway, Satan gave him part of the scripture, but the actual scripture is found in Psalms 91. And in the ninth verse, it starts off with, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. That's the first part of it. So really, um, that scripture only applies what Satan said. It says, uh, he shall give the angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. What, what, what he says to him, really, um, he only uses his angels in that way with those who have made him, the Lord, the Most High, um, their inhabitation, their habitation, those who live in him, basically. Okay, so that, that was more context of that scripture. But anyway, um, here are some scriptures that are found that supports that um, Jesus came and was about his father's business. He did the works of his father and not the works of himself and not to the works of man. Yes, he was a servant, but he was hired by God. He was a servant and his assignment was from God. So he was here to serve man, but his assignment was by God. He was here to serve man, but his assignment, his his uh, his employer, the person who gave him his assignment was God. So remember the employer, um, the person who you are, you know, receiving the assignment from, they lay out what your work is. Yes, he was here to heal um, the sick, to give the blind sight, to cause the deaf to hear. 
Yes, he was here to do those things for people amongst man, but God sent him here. So he did the works of the one who sent him. And um, in John 6 and 15, um, after he had fed the, you know, after he had split the loaves and, and the uh, fish amongst the people, he fled the people because he discerned they were trying to force him into kingship. And, um, you know, God had already planned for Jesus to be king, but it was not yet time. And it was not the way that God had willed it to come to pass. There would have been no suffering in the way that the people wanted. The people saw him perform a miracle and they, they wanted to make him king. But there was no suffering in that way. And the way that God ordained and the way that God predestined, there had to be suffering. And the Holy Spirit was just um, telling me, like, not only... Do we have to be careful of uh, not proving ourselves to man, not not um, falling uh, prey to proving to man who we are, but we have to be careful not falling into the plots or plans of man either, even when it seems like an honor that they are trying to do, even when it seems like something honorable that they are trying to do. Let me go to John 6 and 15. It says, when the people, I'm going to start at verse 14, John 6 and 14. When the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, surely he is the prophet we have been expecting. When Jesus saw that they were ready to force him to be their king, he slipped away into the hills by himself. So the Holy Spirit was saying, uh, you know, just whatever we do, it has to be to the glory of God. It has to be because it's God's plans and not man's plans. So don't let nobody force us into positions. Don't let nobody um, force us just into, into doing stuff. Yes, we have to love you one another, but we have to remember who assigns our obligations, who assigns things to us. It's not man. Man does not assign things to us. It's God. God gives us our assignment. God lays out our work for us. So we have to remain in fellowship with him, communing with him daily and strong in him, firmly attached to him so that, um, you know, that he is ordering our steps and not man. OK, so that was the first example. Then in John 6 and 38, it says, for I have came down from heaven. Was this John 6 and 38? Yeah. For I, I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. So just like Jesus, we can't be stuck up on doing our own will, but we have to do God's will. We have to glorify God. And remember um, when Jesus said, ask in my name, that will I do that the Father in heaven may be glory, glorified in the Son. Ask in my name, that will I do that the Father in heaven may be glorified in the Son. Everything that we do is for the glory of God. It's supposed to be so that at the end of the day, God receives the glory. Not us. Not our will. Not my will, but God's will. Be done. And in Luke 2, 49, he said, and he said unto them, how is it that you sought me? Oh, when his parents were looking for him and they said, like, why? basically they were saying, hey, why you put us through that? We were looking for you. And he said, how, how is it uh, that you sought me? Did you not know I must be about my father's business? So even the parents, sometimes our parents can have these expectations. Sometimes our parents can impose their dreams and their desires on us and their plans for us. They're our earthly parents, though. God is our heavenly father. God is the creator. He's the sovereign God. He is the one who has formed us into existence for his purpose. So even when it comes to the parents, we got to be firmly attached to God. And then John 5 and 19, then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the son likewise. So Jesus was saying, look, I don't, I don't do nothing but what I see the Father do. What he do, I also do. And then after I was given an example of Luke 2.49, and he said unto them, how is it that you, you were looking for me? Don't you know that I must be about my Father's business? 
um, I heard the Holy Spirit say, honor thy mother and father. So yes, we still have to honor them. There's a, there's a way to be about the father's business that is not um, dishonoring or disrespectful. You know, we can, we can um, explain things with compassion. We don't just uh, put them off. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Okay? So we have to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We have to put God first. We don't just forget about our, par our parents. But we have to put God first. Okay? God gets the first of everything. Now, our parents cannot determine the route in which we go, just as God formed us here in, in, um, into existence for his purpose. He's formed them into existence for his purpose as well. And it's not just to, um, you know, to impose their plans upon us. Okay? So, with honor towards the parents, we, we are about our father's business. All right? John 9 and 4 I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Again, he's giving reverence to the Father. I must work the works of him that sent me. We didn't put ourselves here on earth. We were formed into existence. And we're sent into places by God for his purpose and for his glory so that his power can be shown. Okay? Um, just as Jesus was about his father's business and did his father's will, we must do the same. This means we cannot forget to seek him for permission and discernment as to when it is okay to say yes to invitations to engagements and saying yes to someone asking for help. Everyone is not doing the father's will. Some people have come deceptively looking for an access point to create space in your firm dependency on God. Always consult God because he will give spiritual revelation for what we cannot detect. Okay. And then there was a second part of this word. Just, um, just as we cannot um, attempt to prove to man who we are, for in doing so we will have given a foothold or space to say, the moment you start to try to prove to man who you are, you've already failed. You're starting to fail. All right, unless you swiftly um, turn and repent and, you know, get your bearings back straight with God. But if you follow through on trying to prove to man who you are, surely you, um, you are given a foothold or space to save. But the second part was do not seek or accept the rewards offered by the world. Do not seek or accept the rewards offered by the world. And I use the term rewards loosely. Because it can seem like an award, reward, but, um, you know, it might come attached to some other stuff. might end up being bondage in the end. Um, so do not seek or accept the rewards offered by the world. Remember, the third part of that temptation when Jesus was in the wilderness in Matthew chapter 4. The third part of that temptation, it says... Starting in the eighth verse, next the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him, for the scriptures say you must not worship the Lord your God and serve only him. I'm sorry. You must worship. You must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. You must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. And that's also in Deuteronomy 6 and 13. It says, then the devil went away and angels came and took care of Jesus. But in another version, it says he went away until an opportune time. So remember that as you're fighting, when you go through wilderness experiences and you're having temptations and stuff and you're fighting it with the word of God or fasting and praying, whatever you're doing, remember temptation is only going away until an opportune time. In this situation, this, this starts off by saying, then when Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil, 
for 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and became very hungry. So this was after he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Think about it. I mean, what the symbolism is here. I'm not saying Jesus was weak, but the symbolism here, if you fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and you become very hungry, you weak, you weak. Your, your spirit should be strong, but the flesh might be weak. And, and the spirit say the spirit is the, the scriptures say the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So it's imperative that we never let the flesh lead. We cannot let the flesh lead for the, the, the flesh will lead us into uh, the, the desires of the flesh. The flesh will lead us into the desires of our flesh and that will become um, a stumbling block into us. OK, so that's that. Um, another example about. Um, there's just different examples about do not seek or accept the rewards offered by the world. Um, remember, I think it's like, is it Matthew chapter 5? Let's see if it's a Matthew chapter 6. But where it's talking about don't do things like pray or fast to receive um, praise by man. For if you do so, then you've already received your reward. So we can't do things to please man. We have to do things to please God. I'll look it up and I'll put it in the description section for uh, further reading where it talks about not doing things to receive rewards from man or in doing so you won't have a heavenly reward because you've already received an, an earthly reward but just be prayerful because uh some people come as wolves in sheep clothing some people come as wolves in sheep clothing and their only purpose is looking for an access point to create space in between your firm attachment with god they will come they will come as if they mean, you know how Satan came to Eve. He came as an, uh, as an angel. He came as, uh, he came as light. They come in disguise. They come in disguise. They come acting like they want to help, but it's deception. It is deception. He deceived Eve. He, he had part of the truth. He knew that she wasn't supposed to be eating from that tree that God had told her don't eat from the tree. But he made her, her doubt God's loyalty. He made her doubt God's purpose and intention. He made her think that the reason he told her to do that was so that um, because he was keeping something from her. Because he was keeping something from her. But he was really protecting them. He was protecting them from sin and death. He was keeping them from something. He was keeping them from danger. He was keeping them from danger. That was his way of protecting them by telling them not to do that. But so some people will come. Some people will come acting like they want to help. Some people will come acting like they have good intentions. But they don't. And the only way we will know. If Adam and Eve had. If Eve. You know. Um, and this is the reason why God says, Jesus, I'm trying to think, what is it that the word says? It says something about if you've conceived it in your heart and you've already sinned. And this is why, because before Eve had took that fruit off that tree, once Satan planted his seed of doubt in her, once he came and convinced her, he planted a seed of doubt in her, and that doubt birthed into sin. He came and he made her believe that the reason God, he, he gave her part of the truth, but then he put a twist on the truth. And he made her believe that she was missing out on something by not taking, not partaking of that fruit that was on that tree. So that that seed of doubt of deception that, that Satan planted, it fell onto Eve, it, it fell into her heart and it took root. And the evidence is that she took off that tree. This is why the Bible tells us 
to resist Satan, to flee, to flee, literally run away from. Because if we stay there, Satan is going to keep shooting the fiery darts. He's going to keep shooting. We can't control that part. We cannot control what he does. God has, has given him, um, you know, the ability to be into the world and, and to um, do these things. Second Corinthians 4 and 4 says Satan, the God of this world. So he um, he's, he allows it to happen. But, um, yeah. He, he plants, so he, he throws the fiery darts, he throws the seeds, seeing if we're going to stay there and, and let them fall on our soil. He's just throwing the seeds. He's throwing the seeds. Remember the example of the good farmer and then someone who came while they weren't looking and, and planted the bad seeds? He is going to attempt to plant some bad seeds. We can't stay around so that they can fall on our soil. We have to flee. We have to flee. All right? So to God be the glory for the things he has done. To God be the glory for the things he has done. All praise, honor, and glory belongs to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. God bless you. Have a good day.